setting up four motors and four wheel drive for the Raspberry Pi. So the things you're going to need for this build are a pair, two pairs of DC motors, a 9 volt power supply, a bunch of female to female jumper cables, and a Raspberry Pi. I'll leave a link in the description for all of these parts. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to move some of this stuff to the side so we can focus on the dual H bridge here. A few things to note before we get started. Um, as you can see here, there are four pins. And then we have two end pins that are bridged. For this tutorial, we're not going to be worried about speed control because that adds uh, a bit of complexity. And for an, the ease of implementation, we're just going to leave them bridged so that means whenever the the motors get power they'll get full power instantaneously they won't we can't control the speed as you can see there's a big fat heat sink on the back um, there's three front ports and then two outputs on the side so the two outputs are going to drive the two motors on each side these uh, L298 and H bridges are relatively cheap on eBay. You can get like a pack of five for you know a couple bucks. So they're relatively easy to replace if you happen to short them out or they go bad. So yeah, with that st said, let's get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wire up the motors. So for this tutorial, we're going to set them up sort of in this layout. As you can see here, and the right side will all go to the these two output ports and then the left side will go here. Um we're going to make sure that they're wired in a similar formation, so negative to one port and then positive to the other. Most likely the wiring will be wrong, but you can easily remedy this through code. Um, when we first start at the script, we're going to go ahead and test to see the direction they spin, and then that way we can get the default state essentially, and then from there we can develop you know, forward, backward, left and right based on the initial output mapping. So let's go ahead and start. Okay, so now that all the motors are wired up, let's go ahead and get the jumper cable situation sorted out. So let's bring back the Raspberry Pi here for a minute. And essentially we're gonna need four GPIO jumper cables. So let's go ahead and split that. So I got four right here. So if you look at the board um, really closely, on the left side you'll see E and A1, and then you'll see I N1, I N2, I N3, I N4. So all those I N1 through 4, um, those are what's going to be hooked up to the, the GPI outputs on the Pi. So let's start off by wiring I N1. So go ahead and just pop that in there. And that's actually going to be wired up to GPIO 17, which is the sixth pin 
from the left on the bottom row. So that's all set up there. So then moving on to the second pin here, I and two, we have GPIO 22, which is the eight pin, eighth pin from the left. Six, seven, same row. I and three, same thing here. So we're plugging that in. And that goes to GPIO 23, which is the eighth pin from the top. So it's directly across from the last pin. Boom. And finally, the last pin, which is ion four. Have a, have a tight fit here. See if we can make it work. There we go. And that goes to GPIO twenty four, which is. right next to GPIO 23. Perfect. So right next to that pin we just plugged in on the top row. Okay, so now that's done, we're gonna go ahead and bring back our nine volt power supply. I have it hooked up to a pair of DC jacks, so I'm just gonna disconnect that real quick and go ahead and wire that up. So we're going to need to wire these, the middle pin and the left pin on the board. So let's go ahead and loosen those up real quick. And then also to note, this kind of threw me for a loop the first time I set this up. We're actually going to need one more jumper cable for ground. Um, that will go from the H bridge to the Pi. So I have a female to female jumper cable jumper cable here. I'm gonna modify a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these wire sh strippers I have and then cut one end off. So I'm just gonna cut that off and then strip off. So now that I have the jumper cable modified, I'm gonna go ahead and hook that up um, to ground on the Pi. So that's the third pin right here, third pin from the top, and then that's going to go into the, the middle. So it's very important that you do this step or else your board will never know when to switch the motors on and off. So now that we have that hooked up, before we tighten it down, we want to also hook up the, the negative from the DC power jack. So I have the black cable right here, and it's going to go in. So just make sure they're seated pretty nicely there, and then go ahead and tighten those down. tight and then finally the last thing we need to hook up here is the positive side I'm going ahead and tighten that down test to see if it's snug it is, and 
then now that everything's hooked up, we're just gonna apply power to the circuit real quick. It should light up. Just a quick verification step here. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got the two ends right here. I'm gonna just plug them in. You can see the red light turned on, so we know that's a good sign. So now that everything's set up, it's time to go to the Pi and test everything out. So I think for this step, we need to leave the power on. We need to leave the power on to the H bridge and then also power on the Pi and then set up the script. So let's head over to the terminal after you've done that. So here we go. What's up guys? So I've, um, I'm here with Sublime and we're gonna go over the Python script for the dual H bridge motor controller. So as you can see here, we're gonna import the GPIO library and also the standard library for time. Uh, we're gonna have three functions. So the first function is a initialization function to set up all the output pins. So we have the GPIO uh, numbering scheme here and then we set up 17, 22, 23, and 24 to output and then the next functions we have forward and reverse so in forward we're going to call the initialize function to set up all the pins and then right now these boolean values have been set but they're most likely wrong we're going to figure out um, which is true and which is not which is not accurate when we on our first run of the script. Um, and then at, after the forward is called, it will sleep for a predetermined amount of time and then it'll call GPI cleanup, which just resets all the pins. So the same thing uh, is for reverse, it's similar functionality. So these are the three functions you're gonna need and then down here we go ahead and we test out to see if they work so it's gonna print out forward on the terminal and then it should theoretically spin the motors forward for four seconds and then stop and then spin them reverse for two so I've done a bit of debugging here and it turns out I've taped the wrong side on this top motor um, because if we look at the setup we have positive and then it goes negative and before it was positive positive but this needs to be negative positive so I just had the motors in the incorrect place so let me put some tape on there real quick we can get back to it okay now we can correctly debug this motor situation here So if we run the script now, I think there's still some issues we need to work out, but. Forward direction. So we have the right side moving this direction and then the left moving like that. So we gotta flip those values. We're back, look at this Python script here in Sublime and you can see the changes I've made. Um, so to go forward, in this case, the GPIO 17 and 23 are set to true, and 22 and 24 are set to false, and then we just reverse those values for reverse, and that sorts out our sort of direction issues when we run the script. Honestly, you're going to have to do a bit of fine tuning to make sure one that you have your motors mounted properly two that they're wired up and three that you have these boolean values um, set correctly it's just going to take some time that's just the name of the game but yeah once you have that all set up it really helps you out um, you know if you have a robotics problem or a project that requires motor control this is an easy way to control that through Python and the Raspberry Pi by using the dual H bridge. And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, leave a like and subscribe.
stay tuned for some upcoming vids. I got some good stuff on the way. So yeah, peace.